Welcome to this podcast for Brighton School of Business and Management students studying for the HND Level 5 courses. Section 1 is looking at buyer behaviour and the decision making process. Bullet point 1. There are numerous theories on how purchase decisions are made that you might want to consider here. You might want to look at um, how the purchase decision might vary depending on the type of purchase whether it's a high or low value product or whether it's a consumer or business purchase that's being made and you might want to consider some of the ideas surrounding post purchase decisions that a customer may make which uh, might well influence whether they are likely to become a repeat purchaser. Bullet point two is looking at buyer behaviour. Again there are several models of buyer behaviour you can have a look at and you could think about perhaps developing your own model based on or or using one of the established theories as a starting point. You might also want to consider if uh, buyer behaviour has changed or is changing with the much greater access to product information and product recommendations that have been made possible by the internet. I think the reference to markets in the bullet point is is really asking you to consider how buyer behaviour may change for different types of product. So for example branded versus non-branded goods, low cost and high cost products, uh, business purchases versus consumer purchases and so on. Bullet point three, there are a wide range of factors to think about here including economic, cultural and uh, psychological considerations and don't forget to explain how uh, different factors can affect and uh, change buyer behaviour and where possible include some specific examples to support the the points that you are making. Bullet point four is essentially about branding and the importance of branding but with particular reference to repeat purchasing. You need to think about the factors that influence and help to build a positive corporate or brand image and consider as well that uh, that brand loyalty is built up from from more than just a positive corporate image so include uh, your own ideas here on on some of the other factors that can help to build up a uh, a positive brand image and uh, develop brand loyalty and again include examples of real brands and companies to show the uh, the theory actually working in the marketplace on to section 2 which is looking at the use of market research techniques Bullet point one, here you're being asked to evaluate different market research techniques. So we need to look at uh, situations where specific techniques are effective and other situations where perhaps the same techniques would not normally be used and where other techniques would be would be more relevant. You need to have a look at the type of information that different techniques provide. Perhaps consider different uses or benefits of qualitative versus quantitative research and uh, the different uses of primary and uh, secondary research techniques. Bullet point two is looking specifically at using secondary data to achieve your objectives. So you could illustrate this by by setting some typical objectives uh, and then looking at the the types and sources of secondary data available that would allow you to uh, meet these objectives. And of course make sure the objectives are clear, measurable and achievable and also ensure that any any conclusions you draw are realistic and are supported by your data. Bullet point three, you need to make sure here that you address uh, both issues that are identified in the bullet point, that is uh, validity and also uh, reliability of research findings. Bullet point four, which covers the preparation of a market research plan, I would suggest here that you start off by uh, clearly identifying the situation you are intending to research and also outlining the questions that you are hoping that the research will provide you answers to. And make sure that your research plan is logically set out and that it includes uh, your objectives, your uh, sample selection, research methodology and and a timescale. You could also consider if your research plan is likely to require uh, more than one methodology. Uh, Would you, for instance, conduct desk research to do a a competitor analysis and then also do some primary research to uh, solicit customer opinions? And also make sure that you uh, put forward a, a rationale to explain why you are suggesting the approach that you are putting forward. Section three, bullet point one. Uh, the key word here is, is of course trends so look at your data carefully and see if you can identify any hidden or, or perhaps discrete 
trends, um, any particular sectors of the market that are that you're studying that are perhaps growing or declining at a different rate than the rest of the market? And if so, why, why do you think this is happening? Bullet point two, there are two aspects to this. First of all, you're being asked to plan a competitor analysis. And I would suggest that this is a, a written plan in the way that you would write any other uh, research plan. So uh, define your objectives, uh, identify who or what you're going to research, and then clearly outline your methodology. And then, of course, use this plan to uh, carry out your competitor analysis. Remember as well that a competitor analysis can cover much more than just uh, market share or, or financial information. You can look at a whole range of factors like uh, competitors' geographical coverage and, and distribution network, uh, perhaps the depth of their product range, technological capabilities, as well as some of the more uh, intangible factors like uh, brand image, reputation and, uh, and customer perceptions. On bullet point three, you're not asked specifically to use the same organisation that you have used to address uh, bullet point two, but I think there are obvious uh, benefits in doing this, as you should be able to identify clear opportunities and threats from the uh, research that you have already done. On to section four, bullet point one is asking you for an evaluation of different techniques. So this is not just an analysis of the uh, different techniques available. Uh, you need to look in a bit more detail at issues like the effectiveness of different approaches, uh, the reliability of the information obtained, and perhaps why, uh, why some techniques are better suited to, uh, to certain situations than others. Bullet point two, I think it would be useful here, once you have uh, designed your survey, to put a summary in your assignment that explains uh, why you have designed the survey in the way that you have, uh, what you're intending to achieve with it, perhaps why certain questions have been included, and also did you uh, foresee any potential problems, uh, and if so, how you have uh, tried to overcome them. And the final bullet point, uh, if the survey was not uh, successful in some areas, then you need to say why, and also just uh, give some consideration to how any problems could have been overcome by a different or perhaps a more effective uh, survey design. And keep in mind the, the purpose of a survey, which is usually to produce actionable results. So are you sure that the information that has been provided by your survey uh, is actionable? And will it allow decisions to be made which will ultimately lead to higher levels of customer satisfaction? Finally, if you need any guidance or support with this assignment, please contact your tutor.